Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Workflow. In this video, we will discuss about the ways uh, to write a clean code and a better code. So we will discuss the best practices that you should follow while writing codes and you should follow them to write for a clean code. We will also try to understand why there is a need of writing clean and better code. So without wasting any time, let's begin. As a software engineer or a software developer, you are expected to write good software. If the code is easy to understand and easy to change, then definitely it is a good software and developer loves to work on it. Here is a small diagram. Look here. Just uh, look at the cost that needs uh, changes in a software and the time taken to make then changes. So if your code is dirty and maybe it runs some fast, so in that case you can see the time taken the more number of uh, changes you do, the more the time would take, the more costly it would become for you to uh, make changes in that uh, program. But if it's a clean code, you can see it's almost an uh, horizontal line. It almost takes a constant time to uh, make changes, right? That's the reason of making uh, or writing the clean codes. Moving forward, it comes that what makes your code clean? So to say what makes your code clean, you should first understand that your code should be simple and easy to understand. Okay, so uh, what it means, it should follow that single responsibility principle, SRP. If you're not aware of single responsibility principle, make sure you just know more about it. Uh, moving to the moving on, there is a need of readability. Your code, that is, you're you just writing the code that should be readable. If someone is reading your code, they should have feeling of reading a poetry of books. That's the need, right? Your code should be readable. Your code should also be elegant. That means it should be pleasing to read and it should make you smile. It shouldn't be a trouble for others to read your code. It shouldn't be trouble. They shouldn't feel uh, trouble to just understand what you're trying to do with the piece of code. Right? You should, should be elegant. Your code also needs to be easy to change and easy to take care of. If there is a need of doing some change or making some changes to your code, that should be easy, right? I mean, the maintenance of your code should be easy. It shouldn't be trouble for another another person to just uh, go on searching what are you trying to do in that particular block of code and ultimately wasting a lot of time. So that shouldn't be the case. Your code should be easy to change and easy to take maintenance of your code. Also, your code should run all the test cases. That's important. Whenever you would try to write a, a code, it should run all the test cases. There should not be a situation like it's just passing few of the test cases and other cases have got missed. For that, it's better to write unit test for your code to just check that it covers all the loopholes in your code, right? Moving on, you should know about the naming. Like the use of meaningful names is also an important aspect of writing good codes. So use of variables that defines their uses. Uh, I mean to say, whenever you are using any code or using any variable name, Make sure you are just using uh, writing, giving it a name that is suitable to its purpose. It shouldn't be like you are just giving a name like X, Y, Z, A, B, C, I1, I2. No, these are not meaningful name. If you are trying to write a uh, array of, uh, say, roll number of students, name it roll number. In that way, it becomes easy to understand. It's become uh, meaningful. So the person reading the code directly gets to know what that particular variable is doing in that um, code, in your code, right? Whenever names you, uh, whatever names you mention in your code, it should fulfill three basic purposes. That those are the naming purposes. Like what it does. You should remember whenever you are making any naming, you should remember what that name does. Also, you should remember why you are giving it a name. Like why you are giving additional variable. So why it exists there. It should be clear to the other person by the name of the variable or name of that uh, whatever function or whatever you're doing. So it should be clear to that person reading your code that why it exists there. Also, it should be clear to the person how it is used. Uh, that's maybe in the case of functions, you are just trying to say how it is used, right? So that name, if you're uh, naming a function like FIBO, then it's not quite clear. Yes, it's clear, but try to name it a, um, a bit details manner, like Fibonacci, this, this kind of name, a full detailed name of your uh, function or you know, of your variables. So this is the purpose. There are three purposes. This is what it does, why it exists, and how it is used. So these are the purpose that you should keep in your mind before naming any uh, variables or functions. So that's the meaning of using a meaningful names. Moving on, we should follow the programming style guide. So in the programming style guide, most uh, medium or large software projects uh, have a style guide, okay? This ensures you dif uh, that different developers write code 
in a consistent way. So it's important that you follow that style guide. If you're in a big companies or big uh, software projects, then you are just aware that there are a style guide and you should follow that uh, anyways. But if you're just writing uh, simple codes or if you're just a beginner, try to uh, follow the style guides or the common style guide that are given to you. If you are a Python user, uh, if you're a Python user, remember there's something called PEP8 or we call it PEP8. So PEP8 is actually followed for Python. If you're just a beginner, try to follow the PEP8 uh, structure and make your code efficient in that manner. So what is PEP8? PEP8 is basically a document that has the guideline for how to write a readable and efficient Python code. So that's PEP8. Go through it. Uh, there's, you can see all the details it has. It has mentioned you the total uh, way to just uh, go through the PEP8. Also, uh, the style guides provide the three benefits for uh, making your code more efficient, right? So they provide three benefits. So these are the benefits of using the style guide. So in the style guide, the first important benefit is that the code that's easier to read. So it makes your code easier to read. Obviously, whenever it, there is a style guide, so whoever is writing a code, uh, writing a piece, some piece of function or some piece of code to a huge project, everyone is following a particular style guide, a particular naming convention, a particular uh, formation, uh, a particular uh, style of writing code. So that makes it of easier to read and uh, to go through it, right? And everyone knows what's the thing going on there. Uh, also, it makes it clear. Uh, it makes a clear guidelines when you are writing the code. So it makes that clear. Uh, it also gives you a predictable file name or variable name. So whenever all of the persons on a particular project are following a particular style guide, so everyone is uh, knowing that if some name is there, if some particular naming is there then it should be a particular file or it should be a variable name. Like whenever you are importing a class in a, say in a Python or in Java, then you know that the naming starts with a capital letter. You know, whenever you are just calling a function, the naming starts with a small letter. So these are the guides. So these are the things that you keep in mind while you are doing uh, this kind of uh, style guides. So when you're following the particular style guide, right? Moving on, we should know that to write readable code for people. So make sure that your code should have a proper indentation space line breaks to make it readable for others write brief comments okay uh, your brief comment should explain the reason behind a particularly important or complex statements you shouldn't write comments on every line like you are closing and um, uh, you are just ending your main loop uh, or void main in java and just you're writing end of uh, main function that's not necessary so that anyone can understand those kind of thing Right? right, you just add a comment to some of the important or some of the complex statements that you did. Some of the things that others should know that this is something you did here uh, in some of the complex statement, then mention that in comments, but not to every line, okay? Also, uh, this uh, saying I found, that it says the goal of every programmer should be to write code so plain and expressive that code comments are unnecessary. Yes, I love this statement. So I just quoted it here for you all. Make sure you just, you can read the whole thing from the source below. Also, avoid writing unnecessary com comments or uh, the thing I was just explaining to you, right? Uh, move on. It says, make your project well organized. This is a very common problem in software development that we add and delete so many files and directories in our project. A well-structured folder and file makes everything clear and it becomes easier to understand a complete project and search some specific folder and make changes to it. So make sure that your directory or folder structure should be in an organized manner also whenever you are a beginner you might have a you, you have noticed i guess that you have a habit of just creating a, a file directly in the directly in your desktop and just uh, working on with it uh, this is a bad habit go on create a folder make your files within a folder start your, working within some folders don't uh, arrange directly to the uh, desktop and then you just go on searching your file and where did your file go so this is some of the bad habits or bad coding practices so that's what it says make your project well organized so keep the habit from the beginning to just organize your files um, and keep it wherever it's necessary so that helps you find your project much more easily going on these are the common practices for writing quality of code uh, what do you believe is the number one thing a company can do in improving code quality? So there is a graph that shows the various uh, the various things necessary for improving the code quality. So the number one thing that the graph shows is the code review, right? That's these are the things that a company should uh, do 
to improve the code quality, improving the unit testing, writing unit test, functional testing, uh, making continuous integration, integration uh, testing, then details requirement, then static analysis, training on onboarding, and uh, user stories, demo days. This this user stories, demo days. I don't think these are much more important, but other things are actually important. Okay, so here you see a. Um, uh, principle and practices that you should follow and this is uh, something i took from the source below so look here uh, the principle says don't repeat yourself keep it simple and avoid preliminary optimization and favor composite over inheritance so these are the, the red part is actually understanding so whenever these are the principles so what you should follow you should follow the boy scout rule root cause analysis and use a version management simple refactoring and reflection so this way you just go on find the principles and know about the uh, exact practices that you should follow to improve that uh, particular principle right so that was all for today's video i hope this video is helpful for you in making a code a bit more understanding and a bit more clean and now on i guess you can write or you can focus on writing some of the clean codes so thank you everyone for watching this video. Hope to see you soon in my next video. But make sure you just like this video, share it with your friends, uh, comment down your thoughts. If you think I have missed something, make sure you just mention that in the comments below. Hope to see you soon in my next video. Thank you.